Over my career as a miniature painter, YouTuber, and just member of the community, I have been asked to give a lot of critique and advice. And while I love looking at everyone's models individually, there is a lot of common feedback that I give. So let's go over the most common things to help you get better in miniature painting. Number one is more contrast. And this is a critique that almost everyone gets, including myself. Generally, I mean more value contrast, which is the difference between your lights and darks, but there are other types of contrast as well. Contrast is the most important element of your model. It's what makes a flat circle look like a sphere. It's what makes a resin sword look like metal. You get the idea. To understand where to apply your value contrast, you first need to know where your light source is coming from. The easiest way is to just do zenithal highlights directly from above, but you don't always have to do it this way. You could do it off to the side or whatever. So beyond doing zenithal highlighting, another way that you can determine where the highlights and shadows are going to fall on your model is to hold the model up to your face as if your face is your light source. Anywhere that you can see is going to be hit by light. If it's parallel to your eye, it's going to be a highlight. If it's perpendicular, it'll be a midtone. And if you can't see it, it'll be in shadow. How dark and light should you go on each element? Well, it really depends on the material of the object that you're painting. For example, silk is going to be a lot more reflective and have brighter highlights than say cotton. That's because silk is made of a reflective material whereas cotton is made of a material that absorbs light. The same thing goes with raw tree bark versus a highly lacquered table, or concrete or raw stone versus something finely polished. But overall, your miniature should have a full tonal range from bright white to deep black. Other type of contrast that you should consider are color contrast as well as texture contrast. Color contrast has to do with the relationship of the colors in regards to each other on the color wheel. For example, colors that are directly across from each other have the most intense contrast in hue. Basically, using color contrast is going to help keep the viewer's eyes moving across the model as well as keeping things more interesting. Lastly, there's then texture contrast as well, which is basically the finishing of the element. Previously, we talked about tree bark versus a lacquered table. Well, not only do these absorb and reflect light differently, but the textures are also different as well. Tree bark is very soft and dappled and full of texture, whereas a lacquered table is going to be incredibly smooth with just the slightest touch of wood grain. Painting these two items just brown because they're both wood would be a severe disservice to both elements. Instead, I would want to see dry brushing and modeling on the bark, as well as a slight gradation from the light or the color of the light or the wood grain or something on the lacquered table. Number two is lining. Lining is used to help create separation between elements on your model. Imagine lining like applying the tiny shadows that otherwise would be too small or too difficult to paint. Lining can be done with pure black if you want a really intense or cartoonish or comic-y style, or it can be done with a darker color of whatever you are lining around. Lining should be done either near the end of the project or near the end of that section. It's going to be one of the last things that you're going to do. Because of this, you're going to use a lining brush. If you were to use a traditional round brush, the belly of the brush could accidentally knock those other surfaces as you're trying to get into those tiny nooks and crannies. So a detail or lining brush is going to be a far better choice. Buttons, cuffs on the sleeves, individual vials. Basically, if you would cast a shadow, you should probably line it. Three, varnishing. Depending on the type of paint that you're using, you can create a glossy finish on your miniature. The most obvious sources of this is Citadel washes as well as Citadel contrast paints, though inks can do it as well. 
The problem with this glossy finish is that it can distract from the rest of your model. Since it is glossy, it's going to have its own rather intense highlights and depending on the amount of work that you've done elsewhere to apply these highlights, we don't want that glossy finish to distract from the highlights that we've purposefully placed. And again, depending on the element, you might not want it to be glossy anyway. The best way to take care of this is to apply a matte varnish over top of your glossy surface. Be sure not to apply too much though, because if you allow it to pool in the recesses, it'll dry white, so use with caution. Beyond matte varnish, there are several different types of varnish. There is also a gloss varnish and a satin varnish. In case you want to add those consistencies to your model instead of matte. Lastly is learning to see your model. Now this can be difficult and it's something that I still work on today. Basically, it's the ability to separate yourself from your model and be able to look at it for what it is. Ignore the amount of time that you put into it. Ignore any mistakes that you might know are there. Ignore areas that you're really proud of and just look at the model for what it is. You can do this by putting it down and coming back to it another day, taking a photo of it, or looking at it in a different light. What we're looking for are, is there separation between all of the elements, or are there areas that just blend and blur together? Where are your eyes naturally drawn to, and are they drawn to the parts of the model that you want them to be? Is there a full range of colors? Is there a full range of value from pure black to pure white? And are there any areas that are distracting? Once you have your answer, decide what the next step is. Add in those extra bright white highlights. Go ahead and go in with inks to slightly tint or change a color or to help two different colors look more similar. And take note that there's no shame in deciding that a model can't be salvaged or needing to strip and start again. Everyone starts somewhere and painting is a learning process. And sometimes you discover how to paint through making mistakes. I hope that this video was useful and helpful to you. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch me here on YouTube. If you like what I do, you know the drill. Patreon, like, subscribe, comment. I love to hear from you. Otherwise, go ahead and buy my merchandise so that you can own your own Zenithel cat shirt and follow me on Instagram. I hope that you're having a wonderful day. Stay safe and keep painting.